Hello all. In today's session, we will talk about the next topic, adding dropout layers. So far, I have introduced three main, uh, main layers of convolutional neural networks. The first one was convolutional layer. The second was pooling layer, and the third one was fully connected layer. Almost in every CNN architecture, we find these three layers. Now, apart from these three layers, you have an additional layer also that can be added up in the architecture to avoid overfitting, and that additional layer is called as dropout layer. And this dropout layer is added in this network to avoid overfitting. So before moving on to this dropout layer, we will first discuss what overfitting is and then we will move on to the method used to avoid that overfitting. So overfitting occurs when a CNN model fits too well to the training data, making it difficult to generalize new data. This can happen when the model recognizes specific images instead of general patterns. As, as an example, let us consider this image I am training the model with these images of the data and the task given to the model is to classify whether that given image is rows or not a rows. So my model will memorize all these features of the given images and given a new image and unseen data which deviates from the training data, then it will not be able to classify that given image as rows and the output what it gives is not a rows. Why this happens? Because the model was unable to generalize because it learned all the features very well from the training set that it was unable to classify or it was unable to exactly classify the data which was which is slightly deviated from the training data. That is the model has memorized all these features. This is what called as overfitting. And as we are talking about overfitting, let us stick to overfitting only. You can see here that the testing error increases and the training error reduces. That is, it performs very well. The model performs very well on the training data and performs poorly on the testing data when the model is overfit. Now, how do we know that our model is overfit? We have few metrics here. We can tell that our model is overfit based on this metrics you have validation accuracy and validation loss training accuracy and training loss if the validation accuracy is worse compared to that of training accuracy then we can say that the model is overfit that is the training accuracy high and testing accuracy is low now when you have such model which produces high training accuracy and less te testing accuracy then we go for different methods. These are different methods. Dropout layer, batch normalization, pooling layer, early stopping, noise injection, normalization methods and data augmentation. In your syllabus, you have dropout, batch normalization and L1 and L2 normalization methods. So in this session, before moving on to dropout layer, first let us have a quick idea of what early stopping is. So no doubt that a complex neural network can perform very well on the uh, complex data set. But as the size of this neural network is increasing, the complexity is increasing, thereby this model becomes prone to overfitting. So this overfitting happens when we are dealing with large neural networks. So when the, uh, and this model will perform very well on the training data what I am providing, but the testing data what I provide, it performs poorly. So the traditional way to avoid this overfitting, what we will discuss is early stopping. The first method is early stopping. So in early stopping, what do we do is we stop the training as soon as our deep learning model starts overfitting. As shown in the graph here, you can see here on the x-axis, I have the epochs and here you have loss. This is your testing error and this is your training error. What do you notice here is the training loss is decreasing with every iteration. And you might think that the model, what you have designed is still learning, but no. This testing curve or the validation curve is the performance of our model on the unseen data. And you can see that till the sixth epoch it was reducing, but as the sixth epoch started, it got increased. That is the testing accuracy is, uh, testing error is getting increased after the sixth epoch. So what do we do? 
the moment we find increase in the validation loss we stop the training of our model before the sixth epoch only here the validation loss is getting stopped but not getting reduced so to reduce this validation loss dropout layer is introduced early stopping had this drawback so we don't use early stopping in most of the cases we go for dropout layer to reduce overfitting so in dropout what do we do is we randomly drop the neurons and when we are dropping the neurons you can see that this neurons are dropped thereby reducing the number of neurons reducing the complexity and uh, making the training pro process much faster because the neurons got reduced here to understand the concept of dropout let us look into the example here where the model is asked to classify the images of pandas and dogs these two are the images which are provided to the machine so each neuron uh, will handle each feature of the images like this neuron is handling with the eyes nose color and so on so as the training proceeds this neural network will get reliant on some of the neurons so this will cause neural network to overfit the data now for example how do we know that let us consider this image what if this image is given to my model to classify that image as pandas or dogs so this model will not be able to classify this image because my model got is completely getting relying on these images eyes and nose that is it is not considering the feature called as color in such cases it is more dependent on only two features apart from the other features so when this image is provided it will not be able to classify this image as image of a panda so what do we do we drop the layers that is in the first case it will rely on one feature dropping all these layers in the next case we will drop the other neurons or the other features so that it will get trained with the other features so in this way in every iteration few of the features will be used to train the model so that the model gets trained with for example you have 10 features here so model will be trained with all the 10 features so that it relies on all the 10 features of the image and this will be helpful for the model to correctly classify the given image we can control the dropping of neurons using a parameter called as rate this is an argument which is used when you are typing the code and this will tell you how much fraction of neurons to drop and it is a float value ranging between 0 and 1 to understand this consider i have 128 neurons in my hidden layer if i use drop rate as 0.1 it will drop 12 neurons if it is 0.2 it will drop 25 and so on but how do you decide that which drop out rate is very good for your data set what do we do we plot a graph for that to find out the drop out rate on the x axis you have the rate on y axis you have loss you can see two graphs here this is my training graph and this is my testing graph the training loss is reducing till 0.3 rate value from 0.3 it is maintaining its constant value whereas the testing loss is reducing till 0.3 flat till 0.6 and then further increasing after 0.6 that is when i take 0.3 as my drop rate the testing loss is reduced till 0.6 i can take the drop rate for this model if i go beyond 0.6 then the testing accuracy uh, testing loss is also is increasing that means my model i can use 0.3 0.4 0.5 six as the dropping rates any of these four dropping rates will be recommended for the best results as i am going beyond 0.6 that means i am dropping many neurons there which will uh, hamper the performance of the neural network so this is what in your syllabus is what overfitting we have talked about underfitting we have talked about overfitting underfitting is nothing but the model gets trained with small amount of data that it will not be able to predict or classify when new data is provided as input whereas overfitting we have discussed the model gets trained or memorizes all the data points which are provided as input to the training 
dropout layer is dropping the neurons from the hidden layers and the percentage of drop will be decided by an hyperparameter called as rate and what does turn off turning of these neurons means what this is not included during the forward pass as well as during the backward pass so the analogy that will help us to understand the dropout is training your biceps with a bar so when we are lifting bar with both the arms the person tries to rely only on the strong arm which is the right arm than the left arm which is weak so our stronger arm will end up getting more training than the other and will develop larger muscle compared to the left arm so what do you do in this case is we tie our right arm and train our left arm that is don't use right train the left then tie the left and train your right arm then mix it up so that both the arms can be used in the training process and after some time what you see that you have developed both your biceps that is instead of relying on only one feature i will train my model with this feature once and with this feature once so that combining both these features it will increase its performance also thereby increasing the accuracy let us see how this looks in keras you have cnn architecture the text re textual representation convolutional and pooling layer flattening of the input apply the dropout layers give as input to the fully connected layers second dropout layer and give as input to the fully connected layer you can see here dropout layer with the rate of 30% uh, of the probability of dropping the neurons here then you have activation relu next dropout layer this is the second fully connected layer and model summary which will print the mo architecture model what we have designed so as you can see that the dropout layer takes the rate as then argument now when we talk about the color images till now we talked about black and white color images will have three channels and the three channels represents height width and depth this we have already discussed instead of writing 28 by 28 for a color image i write as 28 by 28 by 3 where 3 represents the number of channels for r g b respectively this is uh, the uh, way matrix form in which a computer perceives the image and those values represents the numerical values or the pixel values of the image so talking about this portion of the image these are the intensities of the image of r g and b respectively this we have already discussed in unit 1 now and how to be perform in convolution in colored image as i have three channels for each channel you will have filter as we had filter for gray scale images the same convolution operation will be performed and a feature map will be generated as an example you can see here this is my image with padding as 1 for example stride is equal to 2 padding what i have used here is 1 that means i have added increased the height and width by 1 here so the original image is of 5 by 5 pixel kernel size what i am using is 3 by 3 pixel padding is 1 and stride size is 2 for this the output will be 2 3 that means i will generate a 3 by 3 matrix so this is for the first layer first channel second channel and third channel sliding this filter one after the other with stride value as 2 i will get this feature map for the first channel this is feature map for the second and third channel and then i will add up all these corresponding pixel values 0 plus 1 plus minus 1 and don't forget to add bias value as 1 in this example i have used bias as 1 so 0 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 will be equal to 1 similarly all these values will be added up for the corresponding boxes and this feature map will be generated this is how what happens in a colored image same in the as same in your gray scale images now what do you notice here is we can see that the patterns of light and dark in an object can be used to define its shape and the characteristics so this is another application where i am using two filters instead of using one filter and this is the output generated and what do you notice here is uh, the image is of 7 by 7 by 3 we add two convolutional filters previously we had only one convolutional filter 
so we add two convolutional filters for each layer the output feature map will have a depth of 2 that is i get two feature maps so this is the end of this session in the next class we will talk about uh, hands on session of how images are classified using cnn that is we'll talk about colored images thank you all